Inside of the concentration camp systems established by the SS during World War II, there were a number of despicable women who took part in horrific war crimes. They were known for their sadistic approach to looking after the prisoners, and many were murderers. Women such as Irma Grazer were in their 20s when they administered execution, death and suffering on a huge scale, and they became notorious for their activities and actions. Many of these young women, including Elizabeth Falkenrath, trained under more senior women, and one woman who helped to score many people in brutality was Maria Mandel. She was accused of being involved in the deaths of over half a million prisoners during her time at Auschwitz, where she was a top-ranking female guard. But what were her crimes, and what happened when she faced justice inside an execution chamber in Krakow in January 1948? Join us today as we look at the execution of Maria Mandel, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Maria Mandel would become one of the most evil female guards of the concentration camp system. She was born on the 10th of January 1912 in Munzkirchen in Upper Austria, which at the time was part of Austria-Hungary. Her father was a well-known shoemaker in the area. Maria attended elementary school and then worked as an employee of a private company, and it's assumed she had a rather normal upbringing. But no one would anticipate the monster that she would become. In her younger years, she did visit Switzerland and stayed abroad there for a while, but then, from 1937, she was employed by the Austrian Post. However, things were about to change heavily in Austria. Hitler had his eyes on the nation, and he wanted to unite Germany and Austria and absorb the country into his Third Reich. It was believed that the unification would form a greater Germany, and through a rigged ballot, Hitler would take Austria. But following this, Maria moved to Munich, and then on the 15th of October 1938, a year before the Second World War broke out, she joined the staff of a concentration camp. It's not known what motivated her to become a member of staff at Lichtenborg Concentration Camp, which is considered the first all-female camp, but it's believed that it was the politics and Hitler's Nazi party that had appealed to her. She worked at Lichtenborg as an Aufseherin, or a female guard, and she worked with 50 other SS women, but it was clear that she stood out amongst the other women. Lichtenborg was then closed, as a new purpose all-female camp was created at Ravensbrück, and the female staff were then moved to Ravensbrück near to Berlin. Mandel, whilst there, quickly rose throughout the ranks, and she continued to impress senior Nazis, and because of this she became an SS Oberausserin. She had previously joined the Nazis, and in April 1942 she was in charge of other female guards. Maria Mandel was now on a daily basis overseeing roll call and also dishing out the punishment of prisoners, and in front of others she handed out beatings and floggings. This was done to ensure that women stayed in line and in check. Over the years, thousands of women were sent to Ravensbrück, and also many guards went there to train under Maria Mandel. She would offer classes in which many women attended, and younger women such as Irma Grazer would learn under her and she would teach them how to create reigns of terror and to treat the inmates terribly. But then, in October 1942, Maria Mandel was transferred across to Auschwitz, and specifically Auschwitz II Birkenau, the main extermination element of the largest concentration camp. She took Johanna Langefeld's job and served as the SS Lagerführerin of the women's camp, and she was working directly under the Commandant of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hurst. She was in control of all female prisoners, and she was overseeing female guards and was the most senior woman at Auschwitz. The women's camp there was incredibly brutal, and Mandel was overseeing this. Rudolf Hurst, the commandant, said of the women that worked there that it was easy to predict that these beasts would mistreat the women over whom they exercised power. Spiritual suffering was completely alien to them. Mandel was in charge of the whole women's camp, and the conditions were terrible there. Dead bodies lay all over the site, and one woman wrote of the women's camp. There was one latrine for 30 to 32,000 women, and we were permitted to use it at only certain hours of the day. We stood in line to get in this tiny building, knee-deep in human excrement. As we all suffered from dysentery, we could barely wait until our turn came, and soiled our ragged clothes, which never came off our bodies, thus adding to the horror of our existence, 
by the terrible smell that surrounded us like a cloud. The latrine consisted of a deep ditch with planks thrown across it at certain intervals. We squatted on those planks like birds perched on a telegraph wire, so close together that we could not help soiling one another. Mandel developed a reputation for cruelty during her time at Auschwitz, and her control over the women prisoners and guards was complete. Many men were even scared of her, and the only person she answered to was Rudolf Hurst himself. She was in charge of signing the inmate list for prisoners who went to their deaths inside of the gas chambers. Victims would arrive en masse on the trains from all over Europe, and they were then offloaded from these carriages, and they were selected to be admitted into the concentration camp, and if not, they went to their deaths in the gas chambers. Mandel was known for patrolling these yards, selecting those who went to their deaths. She took part in these selections for two years, and signed inmate lists to deport those to their deaths, and was known for driving prisoners to the gas chambers with much brutality. It's believed that half a million women and children were sent to their deaths and executions when were signed off by Maria Mandel inside the gas chambers at Auschwitz I and Auschwitz II. One prisoner told of Mandel's actions and she said, In August 1943 I was deported together with my family, 27 people including 9 children, aged from 1 month to 11 years, from the ghetto in Schwadula to Sosnowiec to Auschwitz in a transport numbering some 5,000 people. At the ramp in Birkenau, the transport was awaited by the defendant Mandel, accompanied by SS woman Margot Dreschel, and as soon as the transport had arrived, Mandel carried out a selection, sending approximately 90% of the transport to the cars, which transported these people to the nearby crematorium. During these selections, defendant Mandel tortured the prisoners in a cruel way, beating the women, the men and the children with a whip, and kicking them blindly. She would tear the children from the arms of their mothers, and when the mothers tried to come near the children and defend them, Mandel would beat the mothers horribly and kick them. I saw right next to me a young 20-year-old mother who tried to go near her two-year-old child thrown onto the car, and Mandel kicked and beat her so cruelly that she did not get up any more. I held my four-year-old child by the hand, The defendant Mandel approached me, tore my child away from me and threw the child onto a still empty car so that the child got wounded in the face and began to cry and call me, but I was put aside to the group that was not loaded onto the cars. When I tried to reach a child crying on the car, Mandel began to beat me so cruelly that I fell. Mandel continued to kick me although I was lying on the ground and she knocked out almost all of my teeth with her shoe. Maria also administered torture and executions inside Auschwitz to terrorise the women. One example of this was the execution of Mala Zimmetbaum and her boyfriend, who were condemned for escaping the camp. It was said that whilst on the gallows, Mala refused to go to her death, and she then lashed out at the SS guards. But then Maria Mandel ordered Mala, a young woman, to be sent to the crematoria to be burned alive. This actually happened, showing how brutal she could really be. She also, it was said, preferred to beat people herself rather than have someone else do it, and for her violence she became known as a beast. She went out of her way to find reasons to administer beatings. For example, if one woman had a lock of hair that was curled and against the regulations, Maria would kick her to the ground and would beat her in the head. She then would shave them and parade them around Auschwitz with a sign around their neck saying, I broke the rules and curled my hair. She would also pick prisoners to work for her, and they were then murdered when she got bored of them. One incident involved her selecting a child, and she dressed this kid up in fine clothing, and paraded it around Auschwitz. The child accompanied Maria throughout her daily activities, and even held her hand, but she then threw the child into the gas chambers when she got bored. Of some of the activities she got involved in, it was said, In my block, block 15, 700 women were chosen out of 1,000. In the whole camp, that is, in Lager A, where we stayed in so-called quarantine, Mandel selected several thousands of women, and all of them naked were crammed into one block, number 25, where they stayed for seven days and nights without food or water. On the night of the 27th of September, they were transported to the crematorium. For the period of these seven days, we heard horrible screams and groans, 
issuing from that block. When the women were taken to the crematorium, the block elder, a Slovakian woman named Sila, told us that after those seven days, there were more corpses than living people in that block, and that almost all of them had bitten fingers and breaths and plucked out eyes. During these seven days, if any prisoner wanted to carry water or some food to that block, she was arrested there and perished along with the rest. The above described selection was carried out by Defendant Mandel in person, with the help from Carpo, Stenia, Leo and Maria, all of them cruel and used to torturing the prisoners in a horrible manner. If Mandel did not like the look of someone, they were never heard of again. She was the one who promoted Emma Grazer, and she took a liking to her, and she became the head of the Hungarian women's camp, and Mandel saw her as her protégé. But one of the strangest things Maria Mandel did at Auschwitz was to organise a band that would play. This was known as the Women's Orchestra of Auschwitz, and they played during roll call, executions and selections. It was described as, the women who came back from work exhausted had to march in time to the music. Music was ordered for all occasions, for the addresses of the camp commanders, for the transports and whenever anyone was hanged. Even Josef Mengele, the Angel of Death, was said to have been moved to tears by the orchestra's music. But the beasts continued to send thousands to their deaths, and she was even sickeningly awarded the War Merit Cross second class for her work at Auschwitz. But then in November 1944, she was assigned to go and work at the Muldorf subcamp of Dachau, and she was replaced by Elizabeth Volkenrath, who became the head of the women's camp at Auschwitz. But then as the Second World War turned against the German army, like many SS guards, Maria Mandel fled and tried to escape the clutches of Allied captivity. She made her way from Muldorf to the mountains of southern Bavaria, close to where she was born in Munzkirchen, but it wasn't long before she was arrested by the American army. She tried to appeal to her father to help hide her, but he refused to do this, and she then approached her sister for help, but on the 10th of August 1945, she was arrested. She was heavily interrogated about her activities in Auschwitz, and the other camps she worked in, and she was found to have been rather intelligent, and she was also dedicated to her deadly work. But she was then imprisoned in a cell at the former Dachau camp, alongside other female guards, such as Elizabeth Ruppert. The women would discuss their work during the imprisonment, but the Americans then received a request from Poland to transfer Maria Mandel to Polish custody. They wanted to try her for her crimes of Auschwitz in Poland, where she committed most of her crimes. She was tried in the Auschwitz trial that began on the 24th of November 1947 in Krakow, along with 39 other workers at the camp. It was said of the defendants, torturing of prisoners of Auschwitz, already tormented to the extreme, is the evidence of inhumane savagery perpetrated by those defendants who, as a result of the trial, were sentenced to death. The listed violent crimes committed by named defendants, who all took smaller or larger part in the mass murder of prisoners, also reveal that the accused were involved in the acts of killing for pleasure, and not pursuant to orders of their superior. If it were not for their expressed desire to kill, they would have otherwise displayed elements of sympathy for the victims, or at least shown indifference to their plight, but not torture them to death. For her crimes, Maria Mandel was sentenced to death, and she was executed on the 24th of January 1948, inside of Montelupic prison in Krakow. She was held for a brief time inside of the prison, and it was claimed that Maria Mandel, in her final days, did ask for forgiveness. On the day of her execution, she was taken from her cell to the execution chamber inside of the prison. At 7.09am, the executions would begin inside the chamber, and Maria, as she was a woman, was allowed to be executed first. She was taken into the chamber, along with four other men, who were condemned in the Auschwitz trials, and she was placed on a simple step. There was no gallows with trap doors, but instead just meat hooks placed around on the ceiling, and these had nooses attached to them. Maria, whilst on the step, had the noose tied and secured around her neck, and then quickly the step was removed and kicked out, and she slowly strangled to death. It was said that it took 15 minutes for all of the first group to be executed and classified as dead, and Maria was the first one who was left hanging. Maria Mandel was a woman who it's believed was personally responsible for the deaths of half a million prisoners of Auschwitz. 
Her behaviour and actions inside of Auschwitz were horrifying and were some of the most notorious of the concentration camps. She was a brutal guard who would stop at nothing to make sure she inflicted misery, death and suffering on a daily basis. She certainly deserved the nickname The Beast, and for this at the age of 36, accused of being complicit in the deaths of over half a million prisoners, she was executed in an execution chamber in Poland. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.